Hey guys, welcome back to the Joe Jaguar Show, your best friend in science, astronomy, and telescopes. Well, at least I hope one of them. So as you guys can see here, we got the Ioptron Ritchie Christian Telescope. And I got it here in the zone two because I want to test it out before I bring this to Mexico. And I want to just make sure everything's working properly. And I got a second star sense now. So this is a second one. It's not the one that's on the Dobson or this Vixen Finder uh, shoe. And that way I can put a second star sense to my refractors or other telescopes. So it fits also here. There is something else that I w didn't think of. Uh, let me turn this guy around. Hopefully you can see. So the star sense is up here, diagonal is here. So it sticks out pretty big, but I need to put the shoe on the ride gel so I can at least point somewhere because right now I don't have any finder, which is gonna be a little tricky. Now, just looking or just, you know, the slow motion control seems to work. It's holding it pretty good. I would say it's decent steady on the, uh, the mount I have here is the SV Boney 225 mount. Anyway, so this is why I'm trying this guy out and make sure everything works before I take it to Mexico. And I hope, again, that will an 8-inch scope with this AZ mount, not with this tripod because it's way too heavy, the steel tripod, but just an aluminum tripod that I actually, if you guys haven't seen that one, I did that about uh, a year ago where I shrunk a tripod very small and it's very light. Uh, so I'm going to be using that. Anyway, so we're going to see if this works. Without a finder, it's going to be a little tricky. So anyway, so let me put my star sense up here. Just set this up and we come back in a few minutes. Okay, so even without a finder scope, I was able to line up on Arcturus in booties. Now I'm just going to see if it works. You know, it seems to be okay. I don't know how stable it is like for planetary viewing. But remember too, I'm not taking this guy to Mexico for planetary viewing. You can view the planets anywhere, okay? I'm gonna view this for the deep sky objects that I can't see from my 43 degrees latitude north in Canada. I'm locked on to M3 globular cluster. Looks very dim. Let's try maybe the Hercules cluster and see if I have any better view. I guess in this angle, it's a little weird. Maybe because the star sense is pointing sideways and maybe it needs to be pointing in this direction, like upwards. So let me see if I can point it towards you guys. So as you can see, this uh, the star sense is on the side, which I didn't think would be too big of a deal. It doesn't seem like it's in a, or it doesn't like to be in that angle. So I don't know if I have to put the star sense in this direction, like facing straight up and down on the telescope. But let, let me try a couple things. I'm gonna put the Dumbbell Nebula. I don't need the red light because I have the flash on right now because we're only testing. I'm not really seeing anything specific or good. So let me see. I think I'm going to have to move the star sense. It doesn't like to be in this location on the side. But let me just see at least if it's finding things. Okay, we're gonna try the coat hanger cluster. I think that's it. Oh yeah, that's it, okay. Okay, so I found the coat hanger cluster. So, okay, it worked on that. Let's try something again easy, like M13. Let's take a look. Oh, okay, I see it. Man, it's pretty dim. Now, I do have only a uh, 38 millimeter, inch and a quarter, so it is a small. Okay, so let's see what happens now when I put a Nagler 13. Okay, much brighter, but um, I'm just not sure if, you know, with an eight inch and the Hercules, and, um, you know, normally I'm observing with the 12 inch with the Hercules. Uh, star cluster if that four inch just makes a big difference 
Now, I don't know. I mean, today definitely is clear. I, I don't know how clear it is. Like, uh, as far as the seeing. But definitely looks pretty good. Let, let me check collimation. Seems to be nice and symmetrical. So I'm assuming collimation is nice. Stars are nice and pointy. Okay, maybe it's just, you know, I'm used to the 12 inch and now dropping down four inches is a huge difference. Okay, let me try the Andromeda Galaxy. I just want to take a look. I mean, it's a little bit low in the sky, not super high. Another thing is, I don't like this guy on the side and it's kind of high. See how high that is? Um, and it does slip a little. So even though this AZ mount, you know, says it can handle up to 20 pounds and this is probably approaching, I don't know, maybe I should go weigh it with the telescope, the star sense, my phone, the diagonal, two inch diagonal and this Crayford focuser. I think it's approaching around 18 pounds. I don't like the feel of it. It feels like I'm gonna be um, fooling around with this too much, getting it to, to do what I want it to do and then I'm not gonna be observing. I, I think this eight inch telescope deserves a better mount, like at least a CG5, not this uh, AZ mount. It's just a little bit undermounted. And I feel also with the big focal length, it's still not giving me what I want. I think I just, I don't feel happy even just doing it, you know, right now. So I think I probably should go back to the six inch heritage and that one, it can be facing this way, which I think is working better. I think this one, I'm at the limit. And I just don't like how, depending on some angles, you know, I can see it slipping and I don't want it doing that all the time. Um, fine, you know, so I just think this is a good telescope, but not for what I want to do in an airplane travel. I like the Heritage because it's 750 millimeter. I'm getting really wide views, low power. When I do want to go up uh, higher power, I can. But this one, it feels like it's already too much higher power. That's why I didn't like the SCT because it's even F10 at 2000 millimeter. And even though this one's at 1600 millimeter, still too high. So I think I'm going to have to forget about taking an eight inch on a plane because then I need a bigger mount, bigger tripod. It doesn't feel, unless I can put the star sense right here in the middle, but I have a feeling it's going to be maybe interfering with my head. I don't know um, because it's, it's already close. So I don't, and there's no holes here in the center to put the star sense right in the middle. So I got to kind of, maybe I could crazy glue it, which I don't want to do. I'm not going to drill any holes uh, on here. I could put maybe like a Vixen bar on these two. I don't know if you can see it where you are. There's two screws. Uh, I could put one, but I'm putting more weight and it's already at the maximum. So I think how I feel right now is I just don't like this combination. And also look how big from the back of this scope it goes to the two inch mirror. That looks to me like that's at least eight, nine inches and then up. I don't think that's going to be the best situation for airplane traveling. And then remember too, depending where I am, if I have to hold this guy like two, 300 meters, like from the resort to the beach, this is already getting heavy. You know, I should have thought of that, but the thing is, if I didn't buy this guy to try it out, to test it, I would never know, would it work? I would always think uh, about it and maybe I always wonder, should I have tried it? So I think for me, I don't think I need an eight inch and it's not exactly what I was hoping. I think it's going to be too big and heavy for what I need on my trip. So I think I'm just going to go back down to the Sky Watcher and know I'm going to be comfortable. It's going to be light. Um, it's just for deep sky, low power viewing. So I think that's it for this guy. I'm just not happy fully with it. So 
we're gonna just put them away and that's it for this time. I, I guess this is why I tried. So I think for me, airplane travel, I think that six inch heritage gives me everything I want. The aperture I want, well, I mean, I, I would really like if I could get uh, a bigger. I know the Hubble Optics makes a 12 inch Dobson that fits in a suitcase. It is fairly expensive. I think the last time I looked I think it was like 3,900 Canadian or 4,200 Canadian. I don't want to pay that much for something uh, I'm just going to use uh, maybe twice a year, like when I travel. Uh, so right now, I don't think I'm going to go for that. So, But maybe the 6-inch for now is is big. You guys tell me. I mean, how many people do you know travel with something larger than a 6-inch reflecting telescope on a plane? I have to think from everything that I read most people are bringing 80 millimeter to 102 millimeters some people are bringing cameras with and maybe different lenses carry bigger than a six inch on a plane so I think maybe I shouldn't either anyway guys like comment and subscribe this is why I test this stuff so I know for sure and maybe this is it I am not gonna get another eight inch for travel because it just won't work it's just too big, it's too heavy. The focal length is too high uh, for deep sky objects, or at least what I want to do. And you never know until you try it. And for me, I think right now, I just don't feel it. So there's no point going any further. I don't want to sacrifice my two weeks there and something that I'm not going to enjoy and I'm going to be fooling around with it more. I'll just bring the heritage and be done with it. Anyway, guys, like, comment, and subscribe. I do have members video. Once a month, I put videos just for the members. It does not go public, and it's only 99 cents. Why don't you join? Because why not you? Why not me?